discussed uh, in the committee that is now dealing with tax reform, but it would not, in any sense, it would be a change of tax if they turn to that, that's, I know that's under consideration uh, as a part of the tax reform, but the ultimate goal, of course, would be tax neutrality. It would only be there to offset uh, some of the uh, loophole changes or that they may feel are necessary. Mr. President, uh, given the uh, rather moderate uh, rate of economic growth present and, and projected, where do you see uh, revenue increase or enhancement coming from in the near years? Well, all of our projections show that it will, and it's based on what has taken place uh, already with the program that we had passed in 1981. And I think that all of us would be a little disturbed if somehow there was a sudden big boom. We'd, we'd think that too often the cliche might fit boom and bust. But we have to be pretty much satisfied with uh, what has been taking place when you stop to think of more than nine million new jobs. And our trading partners in Europe, there hasn't been an increase of a single new job in uh, the last 10 or 15 years. We. Uh, the figure, one figure that will be used is 11,000 uh, new business incorporations has been every week uh, for the last couple of years. So we feel that uh, that this is normal, or that this is a growth pattern that shows that while it might, might not be in boom terms, it does mean a steady growth, which will also be reflected in a steady increase in, in revenues. Is that uh, 11,000 new business and corporations a net figure, or is it offset by some corporations that go belly up in the course? Well, I'm sure there are. <coughs> some gross. That's gross. Gross. Mm -hmm. uh, there, as I understand it, there are some major new initiatives that you're talking about. One is uh, a study of uh, International Monetary Conference. The other is uh, catastrophic health insurance. And the third is a look at um, whether cash payments or vouchers would be an alternate way to some federal aid to the poor. Um, all three of these ideas have been kicking around for years, in some cases as far back as the Nixon administration. So um, how can you claim that these are really new departures for your administration? Well, not everything is, is new, but um, out there in the, among the states, there is a thing that we've overlooked for a great many years, that our system of a federation of sovereign states is based uh, partly on the uh, realization that states can afford to experiment, can do things that uh, turn out to be effective for them. One example that we have of that right now is the thing we've been trying to get at the federal level of uh, the enterprise zones. Well, a number of states 
because uh, we haven't been able to get that through Congress. A number of states have gone ahead with it and it's proving extremely uh, successful where they're doing it. It could be that much more successful if we could get it at the federal level uh, also. But yes, some of these ideas have been growing, for example, in the field of welfare. Welfare came into being at a time of great crisis, medical welfare, which was the, the Great Depression. There had never been anything of that kind before. And then it became institutionalized, uh, this emergency measure that had been put into effect. We never went back to the previous ways in which this had been handled at the community and the state level. But what we now find we've created is something in which you have to wonder if it hasn't departed from the original purpose. That if welfare was truly successful, it would be reporting each year how many people it had succeeded in removing from dependence on welfare and made independent out of the workplace. We tried an experiment in California when I was governor. It was tremendously successful. And on that basis, when we came here, we started to encourage states, and a number of states now are doing the same thing. In fact, Governor Dukakis uh, over the weekend on one of the talk shows was uh, speaking of the great success that they, they've had with it. And it's the thing that loosely is called workfare. We asked when I was governor if the federal government would allow us to conduct an experiment. And that was to require able-bodied welfare recipients to work at useful community projects. To make sure that they wouldn't be boondoggles, we asked every county and uh, every community to send us a list of the things that they could honestly say they would be doing if they had the manpower and the money. And we went through them to see if there were any just make-believe projects and uh, dig holes and fill them up again. And as a matter of fact, we didn't find, uh, uh, if we found any, it would be here and there, just a few. We found pretty legitimate tasks. So we told them, uh, okay, we had the manpower and the money. It was the same money that was being used for welfare in their community or their county, and it was the personnel on welfare. And we put out the order that all had to, uh, the able bodied had to report. At the same time, from our state labor office, we assigned what we tagged as job agents, personnel, and gave them each a list of names of these people, and said, your job is the jobs can be permanent. We want the people in them to be temporary. Your job is to see how quickly can you, watching these people at these tasks, funnel them out into private enterprise jobs and free of welfare forever. And this was all in the 73-74 recession. And we funneled 76,000 welfare recipients in that brief period out into private jobs. And the federal government had not allowed us to do the experiment statewide. They had only allowed us to do it in 35 counties and exempt, exempted the two biggest, San Francisco and Los Angeles counties, from uh, being eligible for this program. So they never got to try it there. But that's why these, these may sound like old ideas. I tried. Uh, also in California to get an insurance plan that would involve the private sector for um, catastrophic illness. No limit on how much would be paid. We would have had to have one compulsory feature, but we found that if everyone who worked for a living in California paid $35 a year, they could be protected at limitless cost for life of catastrophic illness. And the only reason it never happened was the percentage then out of the 20 odd million people living in California, I've got to stop saying the 20 odd, the 20 some <laughs> too many of them. Uh, the percentage is only about 10,000 that could expect or anticipate having this. And so we just couldn't get any interest in it. And, uh, but, so all I've asked for is, again, a study to see if there is a way in which we could provide uh, this kind of insurance nationwide. Mr. Yes. President, the House and the Senate has passed catastrophic 
insurance plan at least twice in the past, over the last 20 years. The House has refused to go along with that uh, for whatever reason, as I recall. Uh, what makes you think that has changed? Well, as I say, maybe it has, but at least let's study and see what we might come up with that might look practical. I don't know what the provisions were and those other things that were passed. Ours was actually going to be private insurance. We had worked with the insurance companies, and for that low a premium, they could afford to provide statewide for everyone in the state of California catastrophic income. Provided it was compulsory, is that correct? Provided yeah. everybody, That's every right. worker should. Yes. That's why the, the premium could be so low. It would be a universal thing like Social Security. Yeah, but except that it would be paid for by the people as it would with any other health insurance. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, in addition to delaying your speech for a week, how else has the, uh, the uh, tragedy of the shuttle, shuttle challenger affected your state of union speech for the night? Not only that uh, we feel that we had to make reference to it as we got into the speech, which had not been in the previous issue, but... Has it changed the tone of it at all? No. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, on the work fair in California, are you suggesting that that would work on a federal level? Uh, would you like to see that happen? Yes, I think it was. It is being so successful where it is being employed that uh, I think it uh, it could very easily do that, and it could it could lead to uh, uh, more people permanently escaping independence on welfare. Would it mean uh, a substantial increase in federal spending at the outset to get it rolling to create this job? <clears throat> we didn't find that, uh, no. It, there, there wasn't any thing in that that called for any added expense. The person got nothing but uh, their welfare grant. Now, the one thing we did to avoid any conflict about minimum wage or anything, they only had to work 20 hours a week instead of 40. But the other 20 had to be devoted to either seeking employment or uh, taking training, job training of some kind. And uh, as I say, it, it's worked like a game. Yeah, yeah, such specific programs in mind. Are you proposing a study rather than legislation because you think <coughs> it's going to require some generation of support in order to get a program like this through Congress? Uh, this workfare program? The workfare or whatever. I mean, well, each of these areas just, you seem to have specific I say programs. at the federal level, Maybe I'd call on Jack for an answer to that one, but uh, because uh, it is, we have encouraged uh, the states, and it has been adopted in a number of states. And but tonight it will be just calling for a study. Is that a report yeah. back by December first? Yeah. The president has his own ideas in mind, but wants to see what other ideas there are. Let's catch one moment in yeah. the uh, Mr. President, could you also tell us what some of your ideas are on international uh, monetary affairs? You're also going to call for a study there to see if the, the nations should get together to discuss their currencies. What, what, what would you like to see accomplished in that area? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, this is, there's nothing that I can say about this other than I just asked for them to sit down and see what they can come up with that might uh, take some of the volatility out of, uh, out of the present arrangement and to make for a more stable currency system worldwide. We, uh, I could give you one more figure on the California situation on welfare, except I don't want to start another argument with anyone about whether I am berating the people on welfare. I happen to believe that the overwhelming majority on welfare would rather be out in the world with the rest of their neighbors and with a job of the future and working than on welfare believe that um, deeply. On the other hand, I believe that there is, uh, there are two elements. Anytime there's a program of this kind, there are going to be people who take advantage of it, and there is an element of fear. I have a letter that I've treasured that when I came to meet my young mother, uh, children in California, and when we started our welfare reforms, uh, later she, I got a letter. As it began, she started telling me she had been on welfare, their children, and so forth, and how she had become so dependent on it that she even turned down offers of marriage 
rather than give up that security blanket of that welfare check. And I thought, well, you know, the next paragraph's going to get into it. She'll begin beating me over the head for having done this. Not at all. She said that she had always felt that someday somebody would take this away. And when we announced our plans and started working, there wasn't anything that would have taken her off welfare in our plans. But she was afraid the day had come that she'd always feared. So she said she took $600 of the money she'd saved from welfare and moved herself and her children up to Alaska where they had relatives. And uh, there she got a job. And she was writing to thank me because she never would have moved if she hadn't been afraid we were going to take welfare away from her. And she was telling me how happy she was. And she wound up with this line, she said, about working and the job and all. She said it sure beats daytime TV. So uh, this was <coughs> one note on that. The other one was, and this is the one that almost got me into an argument the other day. Uh, Think why I prefaced my remarks with my belief that most of these people would like to be independent with the rest of us. And that is that when we put our workfare program into place, one of the other results, in addition to getting 76,000 people into private enterprise jobs, there were thousands of people who never reported for work. And we just simply stopped sending the welfare checks and never heard a single complaint. And the only thing I can conclude is they were what I call paper people. They must have been people that were getting welfare under more than one name and knew that they could not report for work under two names and, uh, or more and therefore uh, they, just, they just did not show up and uh, they couldn't complain when they stopped getting a chance. They didn't.